Our first speaker for this session, who's Professor Andrew Noyes, who's head of, school, uh, head of the School of Education at the University of Nottingham. And Andrew is currently engaged in a piece of work looking at maths in further education colleges, having previously written about qualifications reform in general and about A-level maths in particular. He's recently been appointed as chair of the ACMEG post, um, post-16 pathways contact group at the Royal Society. So, Andrew, please do come up. Thank you very much. Thanks very much. Um, well, going back to Liz's... Uh, Liz, what's your name again? Lynn's point earlier. Uh, I'm certainly not a wizard, but I do have a, a, a nice little... Um, uh, transition in the middle of my PowerPoint, see if you can spot my one moment of technical wizardry uh, coming later on. So I've got 12 minutes to talk about assessment, which is nowhere near long enough, and I'm going to use some of that time to not talk about assessment. So what I want to do, first of all, is say a little bit about connectedness, because um, we've been hearing a lot about that today, and I want to um, just reflect on some of that. Then I'd like to say something about metaphors, um, networks, uh, maps, architecture and what I think they can do. And that will lead me into some comments about um, GCSE assessment in particular. I'll show you some examples from the latest reform GCSE and then that will lead me to a few key points at the end. But before I go into that, I, I just wanted to reflect on how much I find this whole networking thing appealing. It took me back to a time when I was doing my PhD research with uh, children moving from primary to secondary school and seeing teachers and students with very rich kind of networks, if you like, of mathematical competences, things they could do, things they half understood, and seeing what the limited knowledge that was passed on to the secondary school at a national curriculum level, and wondering how you could capture some of that richness of what students knew and pass that on. And I see something of that problem reflected in the map that we've, we've got here today. And so, uh, you couldn't at that stage have done something electronically that would have done that mapping, but it's an interesting idea to think, could you have a map of an individual's understanding of concepts and links across the curriculum, and what would that be useful for? Um, so it's, it's a lovely thing to see. I, I'm not sure how easy it is to work with those maps but, uh, and those, those networks, but we'll, we'll, we'll see. Right. So... Um, the first of three important principles guiding the Cambridge Maths Framework, this is in the documents that you've read, connectivity, making important connections explicit in a consistent way, will help connections to be referenced more easily, included those which might span multiple areas of otherwise, and otherwise tend to escape attention. So this notion is right at the heart of this project. And there's another part in that, you can probably see that. So um, this, this connectivity is right at, at the centre of what's being, what's being done. Uh, I, I point to this now because it's important for thinking about assessment and what this means for assessment. How would you assess this notion of connectivity? How do you link disparate content, which is common mathematical structure? Um, and it, it reminded me of an earlier piece of work, and um, it's Margaret still here, but you, you might, might, remember, might remember this work from 1997, the year when things could only get better. Um, and uh, this is Mike Askew and a whole group of other people at King's um, who, who wrote about effective teachers of numeracy. And highly effective teachers believe that being human required having a rich network of connections between different mathematical ideas. This is not a new thing for us in mathematics education. And this second point is really important. I want to come back to this in the current um, GCSE assessment framework. Connecting different areas of mathematics and connecting different ideas in the same area of mathematics. And I, I argue that they're two different things, and I think we're probably better at one of those things than the other currently in our assessment. So, this is another quote from that paper. It was clear that those teachers with a strongly connectionist orientation were more likely to have classes that made greater gains over the two terms than those classes of teachers with strongly discovery or transition, transmission orientation. So that notion of connectedness and having a connected understanding of the curriculum is really important for teachers. Um, and Jane and I were just reflecting on, on how so much of the curriculum for the past 30 years, since we first had a national curriculum, has been about levels and ladders and progressing up step by step in different areas of the curriculum as opposed to something more networked and exploratory. So this, this is something from a paper that I wrote a few years ago where we talked to beginning teachers about their 
understanding of mathematics. How did they understand what math was? Right? And they, they sort of grouped into various areas. And the contention of the research was that if you think maths is a toolkit, and that's your predominant metaphor, you're likely to have certain kinds of teaching and certain sorts of practices that, that happen in your classroom. And we had a mention of toolkit in our table earlier on today. So different beginning teachers understood mathematics in these different sorts of ways, and then talked about how you would teach it in different kinds of ways as well. And um, what was particularly interesting was that the people up in this left-hand corner, and you'll see this is the link to the Cambridge Mathematics Project, the networks, the branching, the exploration, the connections, the mapping, could imagine different kinds of teaching in classrooms than this group down here. Look at that. That's my, that's my wizardry. That's all you get. Um, this group down here, which probably reflects more of what we see in the formal assessment in, in, the, in the curriculum. Practice, ladders, contests, so who wins, who gets a higher level than somebody else, and problem solving's in there as well. But there's sort of different areas. Now, you might argue you need all of that, you need all of that stuff, but where you focus attention makes a difference. And so I think something I wanted to say, I think the whole project has um, the potential of shifting the discourse around what maths is and how you think about the curriculum and how you think about knowledge, mathematical knowledge. And if it achieved one thing, which was to develop a conversation amongst maths educators that's more about a network, a framework, an architecture, then that would be a good thing. So that's a sort of preamble, and that's half my time, half my time gone already. So there you go. So high stakes assessment, there's lots to say about this, and I'm sure many of you will have a view. But broadly speaking, um, this is the example I talked about with the primary to secondary transition. We reduce a whole load of complex ideas and knowledge down to something very simple, a GCSE, a grade four, or a nine. And there's a one-dimensional scale for that. And I think probably most people would agree that a GCSE grade tells us little about somebody's mathematical competence. I can have four people in a room with a grade four, and probably I know very little about what each of them can do mathematically. We know that our um, assessment system is marketized and regulated, and we have a representative of the regulator here. Um, and having done some work in that space, this is a big kind of framing problem for us in maths education. It does limit how we can change things, and it makes um, uh, uh, the, the system is quite conservative. Uh, it's, it's a risky thing to change your assessment dramatically. So assessment tends to be atomized. Uh, so in answer to the overarching question, I don't think our assessment helps at all in terms of connecting the curriculum. And we compensate different parts of the, the assessment for other parts um, in, in a way that isn't about competence um, and so doesn't really tell us very much. And there's little space for experimentation or evolutionary development. Ten years ago, I was involved in the Mass Pathways Project, an OCR at the time who were proposing a step change in the way that we did GCSE had proposed that you put out a five-year plan for what your assessment would look like and then gradually change year on year to get there rather than hoping you can make a big step change in one go. Our system doesn't really allow for that, but I'd argue that is what we need. So a specific point in the latest curriculum reforms is about problem solving and reasoning. And many of you will know this, we have an increased focus on um, problem solving and reasoning in the, um, problem solving in particular in the curriculum, 30% are higher tier and 25% are foundation tier. And in the recent reform of those qualifications, there was a lot of discussion about demand in the papers. There was a lot of discussion because of the market and the changed market positions, which was all playing out. But there's also in the group of us that were working on these, um, some analysis of how many one and two mark questions there were as opposed to four and five mark questions. And obviously you can do different kinds of mathematics if you've got those longer unstructured questions. But they're also more difficult. So putting fewer of those big questions in probably makes your paper more accessible. But that's important for us when thinking about connecting different mathematical ideas, because you probably need more of those longer questions. So and this is the assessment objective three from the new GCSE. And this is the use of the word connection in the assessment objectives. Make and use connections between different parts of mathematics. So this is AO3.1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And I'll come back to those elements in a moment. So some examples. This is rather small, apologies, got reformatted from my version. Gary's alarm and Ian's alarm both bleep at 7.50. Then Gary's alarm bleeps every six minutes and Ian's alarm bleeps every four minutes. 
what's the next time both alarms bleep together? This is a foundation tier question off the practice papers, and this has a mark for connecting mathematics. I'm not going to tell you what that is. You can reflect on that. And just to say, I'm not putting these questions up here to pull them down and critique them. These are just examples of the kinds of things that count as make and use mathematical connections. It's a higher tier question. Triangle ABC has area 40 centimetres squared. AB equals 2BC. Work out the length of BC. Give your answer as a surge in its simplest form. Oh, I've missed that bit out. This question here is on, um, on the overlap between the foundation and higher paper, so all the students will be doing this. Um, John's going from Cambridge to Newcastle. He needs to be in Newcastle at 11. Newcastle, 11. He drives at an average speed of 60 miles an hour. What time does he need to leave Cambridge? And finally, an interior angle of a regular polygon is 11 times its exterior angle. Work out the number of sides of the polygon. And that's the mark scheme. So you can see of the four marks for this question, three of them are for problem solving, and one of them is for making and using connections within mathematics. So it's a bit of geometry and a bit of algebra in there. OK. And they're, they're typical of the sorts of examples that are about making connections. Now, obviously, in your assessment, there'll be other places where connections are being made, but they're not necessarily being assessed. But here they are actually being assessed in the curriculum. So some final thoughts. Three things in my last one minute and 20 seconds. I'm going to be right on the button. So first of all, I think there's a problem with AO3.2, that statement. It says, make and use connections between different parts of mathematics. But thinking back to that 1997 research, I think there's two things going on. I think there's combining different parts of mathematics, which I think is all those examples, or most of those examples. And then there's making use of the connections, or the structural connections, within the mathematics. And I think that's something slightly different. At the moment, you can't differentiate between those two. So there's no place in the assessment objectives that would force you to think about mathematical structure and how you would assess the understanding across those structures. That's the first point. Second point, I suppose I need to say, high-stakes tests don't do much to assess mathematical connections. I don't think they really do that at all. And the question for you might be, well, what would such questions look like? And how demanding would they be? And who would design them? And would they be high risk or low risk for the boards to start including in their papers. And that leads me to the last and final point, which is something that Jeff and I, when we were working on a, a project, uh, the Evaluating Mathematics Pathways project, said that we really need to think about the professional development of not just teachers, but examiners. We've got three boards with people doing their damnedest to write good exam papers, in, with boards that tend to reproduce the previous style, because that's the way the system works. So how do we support those people writing assessment items to do something a bit different? And if we wanted to make a significant change, maybe off the back of the Cambridge Mathematics Project, what would we need to do to try and help those people to write really good assessment items? And that is my time. Thank you very much.